The case processing summary table just shows us how many cases were analysed and how many were dropped due to missing data. So what we can see here, we don't have very many people in each condition, we only have four people in each condition. So while this may be okay for demonstration purposes, hopefully you have more than this in whatever sample you, you are collecting if you, do, if you do decide to do a between subjects factor all and over. So the table of descriptives, uh, this gives us a lot of information around central tendencies, uh, means, medians, uh, range. It also gives us information on skewness and kurtosis. And I'd like to direct your attention to the values on skewness and kurtosis, which are really, they're, they're also measures of normality. So the more, that, the more skewed our sample, or the more, more kurtosis there is, the less normal is the distribution. So uh, what we're looking at here are Z scores around the skewness and kurtosis values. So if you divide the skewness and kurtosis values by the values in the last column, which are your standard errors for skewness and kurtosis, you'll get a z-score. If that z-score is more than 1.96, the absolute value of 1.96, then we have potential issues around normality. So I can see in this case that we don't have uh, any, any, it seems to be that each group is normally distributed. Now, to formally test this, we would do the Shapiro-Wilk or the Kolmogorov-Smirnov test. And what we can see here is that in the Shapiro-Wilk's test, that we don't have any violations of normality. We can, or we can see here that the Shapiro-Wilk statistic and the associated sig value to the Shapiro-Wilk statistic is above 0.05. Therefore, we have the assumption of normality, which is, has been met. Uh, also, we can see here your yeah, box plots could also be used to generate our data to look for normality and also for outliers. I haven't done that here. I've done it, I've done it outside of this, this lecture here and I've found that there were no outliers and so just for the interest of brevity, uh, I, won't, I won't go into that in any detail, but I, I have checked for outliers and found no outliers. Okay, so now we're going to conduct the between subjects factorial ANOVA. Uh, what we've done is we've checked out the normality assumptions and looked at univariate outliers. So now we're going to look at the homogeneity of variance assumption. So asking the question, uh, at each of these cells, so there's six cells here, are they equal, do they have similar variance? Uh, so cell one, uh, that's these first four characters here, first four guys. Uh, that's when they had an activity of one, which I think was a low activity Wii game, and a drink value of 1, which is, means that they had zero drinks, and that's their scores on injury severity rating. Uh, or we have to have a look at cell 2, that's these characters here, ID, ID 13 through to ID 16, that's a high activity we game, with zero drinks of alcohol, and that's their injury severity rating. So it's basically asking are the variances in each cells uh, similar. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. Now before you click Analyze, make sure you take off the split file, which I tend to forget. So Data, uh, then Split File, then take that off, or otherwise just go Analyze All Cases, Do Not Create Groups, and go OK. Let's go back to our Data file, and now we go Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, and the Injury Severity Score, that's our dependent variable, so let's pull that over there. Our two factors are our two independent variables. That's these two, two variables here. Let's pull them to fixed factors. And you see a number of options sitting here on the right-hand side. I only really want to use two or three of these. First option I want to use is our options. So we're interested in the main effect of activity, drinks, and interaction effect of activity by drinks. So let's select all three of those and display means for that. And as soon as we do that, uh, the compare main effects uh, option lights up. We can choose Tukey's LSD, uh, but it doesn't make any, any adjustment for family-wise error, so in most cases you wouldn't choose this. So your option really is a bond for only adjusted uh, error or adjusted uh, alpha, or the Shadak. Uh, we'll, sh we'll choose Shadak because that's slightly more, slightly more powerful. Now let's tip descriptive statistics, and that'll give us things like measures of central tendency and so forth. Uh, estimates of effect size, observed power, and our Levine's test, which tests homogeneity of variance. So that's homogeneity tests there. Press continue. Now I could have chosen post hoc there, but um, I'm not going to, but it would have been slightly more powerful, but just simply I'll just keep it consistent across lectures, and I haven't done that, so we won't choose that. 
Uh, now, plots are a really useful way to look for main effects and interactions. You know, just it gives you a visual idea of what's going on, which can sometimes be a whole heap simpler than looking at the numbers. So let's go to plots. Now, activity, that was two levels. Drinks was three levels. We're going to just choose drinks to go in the horizontal axis and let's choose activity as separate lines. So low low activity Wii games will be a separate line to high activity Wii games. And let's go add and press continue. Now we probably don't need too many more of those options in there. So let's just press OK. So the between subject factors table provides basic information about the two independent variables and the number of participants who experience each independent variable. So what we can see here is that 12 participants paid the low low activity Wii game and 12 participants played the high activity Wii game. And we can also see that eight people drank no alcohol or had two drinks or had four drinks. Now with the descriptive statistics table we can also get an initial sense of any main effects if any of each independent variable and also any interaction effects if they, if they exist. For example, if you have a look at the row for those who had four drinks, so irrespective of what activity game they played in the Wii game. So we're just looking at four drinks and they we can see that they had a higher injury severity score or a higher injury severity rating of 50.5 than those who had no drinks with a mean severity rating of 47. So the factorial ANOVA will be used to determine whether or not this main effect of alcohol is statistically significant or not. Now similarly the ANOVA will test the main effect of activity. That is, whether or not the difference between low activity mean injury rating scores of 47.83 and the high activity mean score of 49 are different from each other. And the descriptive statistics table can also be used in order to get a sense of the interaction between the two independent variables. That is, whether the effects of one variable, for example, level of alcohol, uh, on injury severity are dependent on another level or an, on another variable, for example, type of activity. So looking first at the participants who had four drinks and played high activity Wii game, we can see that they had a mean injury severity rating of 52.5. Now this is four points higher than those participants who had four drinks while playing the low activity Wii game. So the factorial and oval will confirm whether that, that's a statistically significant interaction or not between alcohol and activity. Now the Levine's test it tests the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Its null hypothesis is that we have equal variances. Uh, so what we want is it to be not, not significant. So in other words, to, have a, to be above the alpha level of 0.05. And what we can see here is that the Levine's test is indeed above 0.05 with a sig value of um, 0.859. So the assumption of homogeneity of variance is not violated. We have equal variances. So the ANOVA is, it, it's not sensitive really to the violations of, 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 of equal variances or homogeneity of variance when samples are moderate to large and they have approximately equal size in each group. So therefore when designing your study, try to ensure that you always aim to get equal group sizes.